Trans-Texas Corridor 69 project specifically, which comes through this part of the state, it introduced something called market valuation, which is charging the highest possible toll from the public. It basically was taking that same model that these private entities are using and applying it to all public toll roads too, so that they can charge you the highest possible amount that they can get away with. They bypassed all the rules as far as the public hearings. They rammed it through in, in less than 24 hours, so there was basically no public hearing on it. And they, it, it, the whole point is to extract the projected surplus toll revenue down the road. They try and get that up front so they can spend it now before the toll revenue actually gets in the, in the bank. So it's like taking out a second mortgage on your house before it's paid for. That's it's in essence what this allowed them to do. And this is what's also resulted in a 32% rate hike by the North Texas Tollway Authority because they did this. They were forced to do this market valuation on Highway 161 and on Highway 121 in the Metroplex. And now it's completely killed their ability to finance any more toll roads without state help because they've done this. They've tried to extract all this money out up front, which means that those people on 121 and 161 are also paying very high toll rates for everybody else um, to get their roads done another way. So this charging a toll rate, um, this market value toll, means that your, your toll is no longer based on the actual cost of building the road and retiring the debt. Now it's based on whatever the market will bear, except the problem is roads aren't free market. They're government sanctioned monopolies. So it really doesn't work. It's basically just a way to extract a lot of money from the traveling public. So well, TxDOT wanted to raid this excess toll revenues, this code for profit, to fund supposedly non-toll viable segments. So that means they were going to use this excess money from one segment of people to go fund other parts of a toll road that weren't even financially feasible. So they were going to do a lot more Robin Hood with this, this scheme. Oddly, Senator Williams, who's blocked a lot of our good bills since, but he, this was back in 2007. You know how it is. The longer they're there, the more trouble they're in. <laughs> but Senator Williams responded, once you redistribute that money, it's no longer a user fee. Now the toll is a tax. And he's absolutely right about that. The way we're doing toll roads in Texas today is now a tax. It's not a user fee anymore. Those who are using the road aren't the ones paying for the road. We're all paying for the road. And only those that can afford the extra tax, the double tax, can actually drive on them. Highway 161 that had this market valuation required 60 meetings of elected officials to negotiate these terms. There were over 200 financial terms that had to be agreed upon. This is insanity. You talk about bureaucracy upon bureaucracy. It's just crazy. And here's what uh, William Lutz, he's a great cons conservative. He used to write for the Lone Star Report, which is no longer around, but he's still around. This is what he said at the time. The tolls that pay these concession fees, that's basically what they call them, are taxes. They're not user fees because concession fees result in tolls over and above the amount required to build and maintain the road. In short, concession fees, which are continued by the market valuation language in SB 792, allow the government to raise taxes and do off-budget spending in a manner concealed to the public and without proper legislative oversight or authorization. So thankfully, market valuation has since gone away. But you can see the damage it did with just the two short years that it was around. Then we'll go to 2005, and then I promise I'll stop picking on Senator Nichols. We have lots of lots of things to talk about, but on this one, he supported the Trans-Texas Corridor 69 project by voting for SB 792, but this is a picture of him standing next to Governor Perry, the executive director of Textile at the time, Michael Behrens, and the gentleman next to him, the guy in the blue tie, sitting down, is Jose Maria Lopez of Sintra. And this was the signing of the contract for the Trans-Texas Corridor to this Spanish company. Here's the slide in full from TxDOT's presentation. And as you said, Centra becomes TxDOT's strategic partner for the next 50 years. So before he was a senator, he was kind of already involved in a lot of this quite closely. So what's going on with all these toll roads? Are they setting us up for the next bailout? And my answer to you would be yes, absolutely. The toll roads were initially sold to our elected officials in their defense. They were told that this was going to solve their revenue problem. They wouldn't have to raise taxes, right? Well, obviously you can see now that this is raising taxes. It is a tax, not a user fee. And it promised to end congestion. Well, if you look at just that example in Austin, that State Highway 130 is as empty as it can be. And I-35 is in gridlock still today 
It's done nothing to fix the congestion problem through that area.